And thank you for staying up late with us. We have a great program planned for you and want to thank all of our guests for showing up tonight. Now, the question is, is this the new generation of children lacking empathy? A 16-year-old has died after a brutal attack at a school. Now, Shayla Mejia's mother says she and her daughter was, or her daughter rather, was attacked by a bully earlier this month. The teen hit her head on a bathroom stall during the fight. Mejia ended up collapsing four days after the attack and died. Doctors say Mejia had a brain hemorrhage. Why are some, some kids so vicious these days? That's the question we're asking tonight. Joining us for the discussion, mental health counselor Ashantia Wolf, parent Demetrius Walker, and parent Daylin Settle. Glad to have you all here on the Factor Uncensored. So, Demetrius, let's begin with you. When you see children, and we've seen the social media videos, yeah. and it seems brutal, yeah. and dare we say it, almost animalistic, the way they hit each other and they won't stop until that person is down. W what do you think we're dealing with now? You know, we're dealing with a lack of compassion overall. You know, in this country and around the world, we're seeing violent images on social media. We're in two wars right now uh, on top of all of the other imagery that uh, kids are seeing in terms of uh, reality television. And it's very unfortunate, you know, I've even had problems in uh, you know, school with my son with bullying and, you know, going to the administrators and just letting them know, hey, these things are going on. We need to take a look at it. Uh, this young lady's mom, she went to the school. She did all the right mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And unfortunately, this still occurred, which is a travesty, and it shouldn't happen. You know, it's terrible. And Dale, Lynn, your thoughts on this as, as a parent? You yeah, you know, as a parent and I have the privilege of working where my all my kids go to school, so I get to see firsthand what it looks like. And, and what does it look like from your perspective as a parent in the trenches with those kids? It's a lot of desensitization. The kids are very desensitized to um, what they say, what they do. It, it's almost like it doesn't even affect them anymore, and I think a lot of that has to do with the culture around them. Um, it's very accepted. They see things on TV. I remember when we couldn't watch certain things on TV. Mm -hmm. There was a, a restriction. It would say, like, rated E or rated, you know, mature audience. They see and have access to everything. Um, and I think also the biggest part that I'm seeing in the schools is the parents. It's You can see where the kids are getting it from because a lot of times it's the behaviors that they see at home. Mm -hmm. And we have to, have to start teaching our kids how to regulate their emotions, and they're not knowing how to do that. It, it's very evident. Um, the rage comes from not being able to handle their emotions. I'm going to leave that to you to be able to explain <laughs> that in your field. But yeah. Yeah. And, and as a counselor, what do you think the problem is we're seeing with young kids today? Obviously, you know, I saw a documentary where they said these are iPad kids and they did they don't have the human contact, they don't have the human interaction Correct. and there's some coldness, some void there where they they don't see others as or anyone as human, it's just like an interaction. Yeah. Your thoughts about that. And yes. I hate to be so bleak and just like end of the world but Right, but I think there's something to say about them not having the skill set, first of all. So we have research that came out in October of 2023 to which 13 through 17 year olds, 47% of them reported that social media use was harder for them to learn social skills. These kids do not know how to navigate conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. And they don't exist in a vacuum. They're part of a system. And when one of those systems fails, the children are the ones that have the consequences. And what can you do about this at that point? Because they've been raised by technology and not an actual parent who is, well, I mean, the parents are there, but the parents see an easy way out. Let me give him this iPad, this smartphone, and that'll keep him quiet or her quiet until I have time. But how do you even address that in, you know, at this point in 2024? Well, I think that we're moving in the right direction when we incorporate soft skills into every part of the teen curriculum and the teen life. And for those who don't know what soft skills, because I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> <laughs> like the skills that we use to navigate the social settings of our jobs and our environment. Mm -hmm. So some of those skills are more valuable than the technical skills when we get onto a job. So even when introducing a curriculum for job search or job employment, learning soft skills helps 
learn the social skills of how to navigate different environments. Mm -hmm. And so is that something that schools can teach or is that up to parents now? They already have. There's a lot of schools who have started in kindergarten teaching social skills, how to get along, conflict resolution on their level. But by the time we get to high school, like this situation is, then we're going to be looking at how does this benefit you now and as a young adult. Mm -hmm. And Demetrius, do you have much hope for this current generation in getting out of that desensitized realm that they're in currently? I have hope. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. And, you know, I'm vegan, Isaiah, so I believe peace begins on your plate. <laughs> because if you can have compassion for the least of us, you can have compassion for all of us. And so I think that, you know, as we adopt more compassion for the smallest things in life, we can adopt more compassion for each other. Dale Lynn, your thoughts on this. Do you think there is hope? that we can turn these kids around? I mean, as a mom of five, I have to believe that there's hope. Mm -hmm. um, I look at my kids every day and I see hope when I look at them. And so I think all it takes is a few good ones to be able to stand up and say, hey, no more. Um, and I and think but do you ever have concern as a parent? You're like, okay, I need to work with that one. Oh, yes, most definitely. Um, and But the, I think the key for me is addressing it. My mom said, I used to always say nip it in the bud, mm -hmm. not letting it go um, unaddressed for very long. And so I think it's, you, you're right. It is easy to give them an iPad and say, oh, please go sit down. Mama needs a moment. But it's also more more productive if I take a moment with them and like she was saying teach them those soft skills and so it does de definitely starts in school but also at home having these necessary conversations with them and addressing you know their anger when I see one of them you know lashing out having conversations with them and you know I think our new generation calls it gentle parenting trying new different approaches not always raising my voice but actually talking to them and figuring out why are they angry what's going on at school because even though they're little kids they still have emotions and feelings and their big feelings and they don't know how to express it and I think it's my job as their mom to be able to teach them how to express those feelings. Shanti, you brought us soft skills. <laughs> you brought us gentle parenting. All I knew was that damn belt on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it Thank you guys for joining us here on The Factor.